Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for stopping by. Today we're gonna to be showing you how to install a seven plus a four pin connector um, for your trailer harnesses to plug into. Typically on these trucks, they're mounted below. I have a Kurt aftermarket receiver hitch and the, you, I didn't want to drill into it and stuff like that because I do have it powder coated. So we're gonna go ahead and install it in a better position, which I think is the best position to the right or left, depending on how you're looking at it of your license plate right here. Now I will link this below for you, but obviously you can see here, it's got that seven pin. And then also it's got the four pin below here. It's really, really nice. It's really just plug and play on the back here. And I'll show you that in a little bit. You're gonna just simply drill out the hole, which I'll give you the whole size for this, whole cup size for this. And then also you have four holes here to drill to mount it. They do make one um, that's kind of just like a twist in. You just drill your hole and then you just kind of twist it in place. It's kind of the same price, I think. I think this is $25. I like the one where you can um, kind of bolt it in a little more sturdier. I also upgraded the, the um, hardware because it comes with just like zinc hardware. And my old one, uh, my old bumper rusted out, the hardware rusted out. Uh, so I got stainless steel hardware to replace it with. So if you're following me, you understand why this truck doesn't have a bumper on it. Um, if you watched the previous video, you'll understand why it doesn't have a bumper on it. But I'll show you right now, this is how your factory trailer harness plug um, is. It's pretty simple. It's just right here. Um, as you can tell, you can see here, it's bolted or, or welded onto the re factory receiver and I just don't really care for the location of it, but this is what you're basically going to, um, if you're gonna have this, you can just cut this off and remove it or leave it on or put the seven pin in its place and that's what that twisting one is for. Um, I personally just like to take it out of here and then put it up at the bumper like I'm gonna show you shortly. All right, so on the back side here, you're gonna have the, the factory harness plug. It's gonna be plugged right in just like this. You're gonna see this right here. This is gonna be kind of clip. All you have to do is push this in and then it'll wiggle wiggle on out for you just like that you can see it's got that nice dielectric grease in there and i'll show you that we're going to reapply that on our other harness but since i'm not doing it on this truck i'm going to plug it in i just wanted to show you guys that basically because that's already done on this truck i've got it taken off i don't have that uh, factory one on there anymore so i wanted to show you if you did have a factory one where you want to remove it and how you need to take it off go ahead and drill out our hole into our bumper make sure you don't have anything behind here which you shouldn't we're going to drill this in this is a two and one eighth hole saw. This is a Milwaukee hole saw. I will also say I really like these style hole saws with this almost like set screwed type of connector, uh, set screw type of nut on it. It makes it a lot easier taking these things off. So here you can see it's nice and flush now. Um, there's a little wiggle room in here, so you could probably do more like a, a two inch hole saw, but um, that's not really that big of a deal. So next I'm gonna drill out my two holes. What's really nice about this is if you see here, so um, my replacements are M580030. That's my replacement. Um, hopefully it, it should be basically perfect, I would think here, um, but you can see here it fits really nice and perfectly in here as well. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and drill our holes right now. I'm utilizing my Milwaukee drill. I'm starting with a 9 16th drill bit, and then I step up on the back side to a quarter inch drill bit and able to give those M5 screws enough space to get through the quarter inch drill bit is also not too big for the M5 washers that we're utilizing. And then go ahead and I put the first two, I put the first top two on to line it up nice and straight, tighten them down, and I'm gonna drill out the bottom two. And then again, I drill out the back side um, because the connector is already on there. I don't wanna drill the black part. So we're gonna go ahead and drill the quarter inch on the back side, and then go ahead and put our screws in, tighten them down. Add dielectric grease to our connector. I personally use my own dielectric grease. I don't use what the typically is provided with anything. Um, put that on there, wipe it off, get it nice and clean, and then simply just go ahead and plug it in. Then of course, once you plug it in, you're gonna go ahead and wipe your hands off of the dielectric grease that you have on your hand. 
um, because man, that stuff gets kind of nasty. But here you go, that's what it looks like in its place. I'm happy with these. I've had one of these before on my old bumper before I got it re-powder coated. It's really nice to have the four pin and the seven pin available and not have to run like a pigtail or anything like that. And this location is absolutely ideal. So here is the dielectric grease that I use at work and at home on an absolute daily basis. I do not use the prepackaged stuff that people send. Also, I'm not sure how good the focus is for you guys, but I do want to point this out. I use a nylon lock nut. Instead of your typical nuts uh, with like a lock washer, I like to use nylon lock nuts, especially when you're dealing with a lot of vibrations on the road and stuff like that. And then also um, for the M5, it's gonna be an eight millimeter socket, just so you know. Of course, I'm rocking the Pittsburgh um, flex head ratcheting wrench. I'm actually getting a new one of these, um, a locking one specifically, and then snap on sockets. Again, I'm a really big fan of how this looks specifically and how it operates. Um, it's just an absolute perfect spot, you guys. It's way better than down here. I really like it, especially when you have those extra long uh, leads for your trailer lights and stuff like that. So it's really, really nice. Super simple to do. It's not even like a 30 minute project, maybe a 30 minute project if you had to take the old one off and you wanted to relocate it like this. Um, I highly suggest that I'll leave a link below for this. Again, I used stainless steel hardware. I highly suggest swapping the hardware out that it comes with it, going to your local hardware store and finding what fits. Again, I used M5.80 um, thread count with a 30, I think it's 30 millimeter length or 30 length is what I used. Um, I just got it from my local hardware store. That's, it's really that simple. So thank you for watching this. It's like I said, this is beyond simple and I highly suggest you guys doing it, especially those that deal with four pins a lot, bouncing between four pins and seven pins like I do myself. So I hope it just helped you a little bit. Make sure you go ahead and like this video, subscribe to the channel and share the channel as well as we wanna grow as quick as possible. We wanna get to that 10,000 subscriber mark by the end of this year. So um, we've got a lot of big things coming here shortly. We're gonna be doing the rockers, cab corners, all that really quickly. I just got a brand new piece of equipment that I'm very excited about, my very first ever. Um, so, and I've never done it before, so it's gonna be interesting how this all works. So if you wanna see what I've got coming up here real shortly, make sure you subscribe to the channel. So uh, thanks for watching.